you are. Come on, you acknowledge. Come on, somebody. Come to answer the screen and say, Bishop, Bishop. preach the word. Come on, receive Bishop H.L. Bus with an amen. God bless you, heaven smile upon you. For those of you that are viewing this broadcast by the way of Facebook, those of you that are listening by the way of the conference line, we do bring you greetings this morning. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we're thankful for this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank God for all of you, all of you that are listening, all of you that are listening and viewing. Amen. We thank God for you this morning. Those of you that were in, we had a brief uh, malfunction with our technical uh, equipment, but we ask that you come back in, call your neighbor. If you don't see your neighbor on, call them, tell them to come back in uh, this morning. We're here still at the Power of Faith Ministries Live. Emanating from 24502 Campbell Street, here in the city of Warren, Michigan, amen. The Power of Faith Ministries International Church, I yours truly, Bishop H.L. Bunsen. We're just here this morning to lift up the name of Jesus. Can I get a witness out there? We came for no other purpose this morning but to lift up the mighty name of Jesus. We want you to get your Bibles, those of you that are listening, those of you that are viewing, those of you that are here in the sanctuary, and go with me to the book of St. Matthew, St. Matthew's chapter 7. Don't forget, those of you that are viewing, those of you that are viewing, please go back and let someone know that may have got disconnected. Let them know that we are back on, all right? We are back on Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. And I want you to look at me this morning at two verses of scripture in the book of St. Matthew. Verses 7 and verse number 8. I want you to pay very close attention to the word of the Lord this morning. Verse number seven says this. Listen carefully. It says, Ask uh -huh. and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. I want to preach to you this morning from a subject entitled, Don't Stop Praying. Prayer Still Works. Don't Stop Praying. Prayer Still Works. Words. Pray. Pray until something happens. Amen. Don't give up. But be fervent, fervent and committed and consistent in prayer. Now I know that we live in a world of instant gratification. Even in church now, it seems as if though we put a lot of emphasis on calling things into existence, speaking and calling things which be not as though they were. And don't get me wrong, church, because I believe in speaking to mountains and commanding them to be removed and not doubting in our hearts, but believing that those things which we speak shall come to pass. But what I'm afraid of, church, is that in all of our confessions of faith, in all of our name it and claim it, 
In this world, this society of instant gratification, hear me good, I think that the church is losing its zeal for fervent and continuous prayer. You hear me this morning? Now don't get me wrong, I, I believe that, that the name of the claimant has its place. I, I believe that. I believe that we can speak and cause things to, to come into existence and speak things into existence. But I still believe in prayer. Amen. I still believe in praying until God does something on our behalf. I still believe in praying until I see things happen. I'm old school. I believe in praying until I see results. I believe in praying until I see the hand of God move. I believe in praying until I see prayers answered. And I don't know who I'm talking to today because there may be some of you right now that are going through some things in your life. And you've been praying and you've been praying. And it seems as if though your prayers are going unanswered. But I came by here with a word somebody this morning and that word is to tell you don't stop praying. Prayer still works. My God, prayer, prayer still works. I, I, I want to share this with you. Uh, I, I went through some something on this past week myself and Pastor Butts and I do want to say to those of you that have been praying for Pastor continue to pray for continued healing and, and, and we went through something, and the doctors gave us a very uh, a negative report. But I told my wife, I said, you know what? I don't care what they're saying. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't care what the, the doctors are saying. I don't care what the tests say. I don't care what they say. But we're going to pray, and we're going to believe, God, that this condition that you are dealing with will not be something that you will have to deal with for the rest of your life. I wish I could get somebody out there to believe that prayer still works. I believe that when you pray, God can change situations. But you've got to pray, amen, until you see things turn around. You can't give up. Amen. My God, you can't give in. You can't get weary. Would you just tell somebody, look at somebody there in your living room, in your bedroom, or here in the sanctuary, wherever you're watching or listening to this broadcast this morning, would you tell somebody to pray until something happens? Yeah. My God, you've got to push, push. Pray until something happens. One of the most rewarding acts in the Christian life of a believer is a prayer life. Yeah, yeah. A life where you spend praying, when you, when you spend communicating with God. Let me share with you what prayer is. Prayer is when, when the earthly meets the heavenly. Prayer is when man communicates with God. Prayer is when, when the divinity meets the humanity. Prayer is simply when we can communicate with our God. My God, you're excited about talking to folk that may be rich and may be powerful on earth, but I'm more excited about talking to God because I know that whatever I'm dealing with, God can change my situation and he's able to turn it around. Do y'all believe that this morning? Do you believe that whatever you're dealing with, God is able to turn it around when he's waiting on you to tell Power 
powerful subject of persistent prayer. Our text opens in verse 7 with Jesus talking, and watch what he says. Jesus says, ask, seek, and knock. Jesus is teaching us to be persistent in three areas, and these three areas are simple basics, commands to teach us not to cave in with doubt and discouragement. Watch what he says, these three areas. He says, asking, seeking, knocking, and notice they are actually present in interpretives. In other words, Jesus is actually saying it's like this. Watch this. Keep on asking. Keep on seeking. And keep on knocking. Y'all miss that. I said, keep on asking. Keep on seeking. And keep on knocking. Jesus wants us to be persistent in our prayers. Watch this. He said this, number one, he says, ask. My God, you got to open up your mouth and tell him what you want. You got to open up your mouth and ask. And let me tell somebody that no matter how big or small your request is, he's able to do something about it. My God, but you got to tell him what you want. My God, me and Sister Bucks were praying, amen, the other night, and she said, Lord, not only do I want you to heal me, but I want you to make me whole. You got to ask. This means that we come before the Lord in total helplessness. We come before him with empty hands. We are to address him as the only one who can do anything about our situation. My God, in prayer can we can't come to God with an A plan and then if that don't work out, we got a B plan. We've got to come to him and asking him in faith that all of our confidence has to be in him. As Mama them used to say, they said if the Lord don't do it, it won't be done. You've got to have total dependency on God when you pray. I wish you'd hear me this long. The Bible said in James chapter 4 verse 2, it says you have not, hear me good, because you ask not. Tell somebody that, tell them, say you have not because you ask not. you got to ask for what you want. We've got to ask him what we want him to do. You've got to bring your petition to the Lord and then you've got to leave it there. And you've got to stay before the Lord continuously until you see things change. Until you see things turn around. Don't give up on prayer. Don't give up on talking to God. Don't give up on your petition. But keep on praying until God turns things around. Number two, we've got to seek. I love that. Seek, that means to look for, to search out. We are to look for, we are to look forward to God. We are to search for God's will. We are to keep on seeking. Watch this. We've got to get to a point in our prayer life where instead of us telling God what we desire, we've got to seek his desire and his will for our life. Can I tell you something? Because some of you, there are a lot of things that you're praying for that's not in the will of God. And that's why it's not manifesting. There are a lot of things that you want God to do and you're praying for God to do it and it's not manifesting. One of the reasons why, maybe because it's not in God's will. My God, when you get down before God and you pray, you've got to learn how to pray and say, Lord, let your will be done in my life. Thank you, Jesus. Church, may I tell you that seeking God's will is where most Christians experience difficulty and discouragement. It's because most people want what they want. But I've discovered that a lot of times what we want is not always what's best for us. Come on. Let me say that again. What we want is not always what's best for us. The mature Christian understands and desires, amen, God's will in, in spite of his own will. Because a mature Christian understands that a lot of times your own will will bring chaos and conflict. But all it is in God's will. Y'all yeah, yeah, yeah. didn't hear me this morning. I said, oh, but when you ask things that are in God's will, my God, that's why I tell people all the time, if you're praying about things that it doesn't work out, don't be discouraged. Amen. Or don't give up if it seems, amen, that God will close 
the door, get ready because if you see that he closed one door, he's getting ready to open up another. Yeah. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Don't get discouraged because, hey amen, one window is closed. If that window is closed, God is getting ready to open up another window. And if he don't open up another window, he's bad enough to take the roof off the place. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So you got to see. You got to seek and find his will. Amen. Number one, you got to ask. And then number one, you got to seek. And then, then, then watch this. Watch this. Number three. Then you got to knock. Yeah. I like that. Yes. You got to knock. You got to get persistent. You got to get violent. The Bible said the Bible is taken by force. Jesus promised that our persistence will be rewarded in three ways. Number one. When you ask Jesus promises, it will be given unto you. The scripture said, everyone who asks receives. Are y'all with me? Number two, Jesus promised that when you seek, you shall find. Thank you, Jesus. And number three, Jesus said, when you knock, watch this, the door will be open. The door will be open. To him who knocks, it will be open. Knocking refers to being persistent in your prayer. Knocking refers to being vigilant in your prayer. Knocking refers to you becoming a man, a, a persistent and vigilant to the point where you're going to do something, where you're going to take action. My God, you got to knock. And Jesus said, when you knock, the door shall be open. Ask, seek, knock. This kind of prayer doesn't give up. This kind of prayer doesn't give in. Knock, ask, seek. This kind of prayer is the prayer that Jesus wants us to pray. He wants us to pray a continual, persistent prayer. My God, if you've got loved ones that are unsaved, watch this church, don't give up on them. But keep on praying. If you got sickness that seems like it won't go away, don't give up. Keep on praying. If you got problems that seem unsolvable, don't give up. Keep on praying. Tell somebody, pray. Pray until something happens. Push. Push until something happens. And don't remind yourself of the power of your problem, but remind your problem of the power of your God. Let me say that again. I said don't remind your problem, amen, yourself of the power of your problem, but remind yourself of the power of God. My God, I got to close this morning. But I want you to know, amen, that when you make it up in your mind that you're going to pray, that you're going to go ahead and you're going to keep on asking, you're going to keep on knocking, you're going to keep on seeking, you're going to keep on praying, I'm going to tell you that God will begin to do the miraculous in your life. Go ahead and knock. My God, if you don't get what you want the first time, guess what? Don't give up. Keep on asking. Don't give up. Keep on seeking. Don't give up. Keep on knocking. My God, learn how to push, learn how to pray until something happens. The devil wants you to become discouraged. The devil wants you to throw in the towel. The devil wants you to give up. But if you really need something from the Lord, you better learn how to get in the position, amen, to push. Y'all ain't going to help me preach. I said if there's something that you really need from God, you better learn how to get in the position where you push, where you pray. Until something happens. My God, pray, pray, push, push till you give birth to your dream. My God, push, pray until you give birth to your vision. Push, pray until you give birth to your healing. Push, pray until something changes in your life. Push, pray. Don't give up. Keep on praying. And may I tell you sometime when you're praying, the situation make it worse before it gets better. But oh, Verse 14 says this. He said, If my people, which are called by my name, 
should humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then God said, Well, I'll hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will, yeah, I will heal their land. My God, I feel like preaching in here today. I came back here this morning to tell somebody to keep on praying. It's praying time right now. And I don't care what you're going through. I want you to know that if you pray, God is able to turn the situation around. I want you to know that if you pray, if you keep on asking, if you keep on seeking, if you keep on knocking, God is able to do what no other power, but no other power can do. But he needs somebody that's going to be persistent. He needs somebody that Keep on praying until God turns it around and calls it to work for my good. I'm going to pray. I'm going to preach it in my classroom and when I'm going home, I said I'm going to pray until I see things happen. I'm going to pray until God turns it around. I'm going to pray until I get a breakthrough. I'm going to pray until I get healed in my body.
Before we close, 